Hey, what's going on? Coach Luca back here. Today I'm gonna go, now if you guys watched the past video that I did about on a squat warm up that I love, that incorporates core stability, hip mobility, like really those squat patterns, this today is gonna be the same thing for a deadlift, right? So uh, over, over time I've kind of found some ways to like really, really warm up the deadlift really well before you start going heavy. If you're ramping up to, you know, threes, fives, sixes, whatever it may be, it just would be considered your deadlift is your main lift for the day. So, you know, using kind of like that map winning methodology, like building capacity or, or, or getting a lot of ramp up sets in, uh, I'm gonna use the kettlebell deadlift today as an in-between, but you can also do trap, I've done trap bar before, I've done straight bar deadlifts. Um, but what I like to do is kind of ramp up with the, with, the, with the kettlebells and then towards the last sets actually start going already into maybe a trap bar deadlift, which is usually my main, my main deadlift lift that I like to go heavy with. So essentially what we're gonna do is go through an exercise, do some reps with the deadlift, go back to another exercise and keep flip-flopping. But this is, would be in a warm-up actually at a pretty decent pace. So at the end you're sweating, you're, you're good to go. So the first one, there's one or two things I would do. You guys see me do, uh, do this one a lot, which is the rectus femoris kind of couch stretch, right, where I'm, where I'm in this position. And what I'd be doing is pushing my foot into the pad, squeezing my glute, pulling my, my heel towards me, abs on, and just breathing in this position, okay? And I'd go for six to eight breaths. Now, that one we've done before. This could be one of the scenarios, but what I, the one I'm gonna show you today that I love is the bretzel. And the bretzel, if, if you can do it, is awesome because we get thoracic rotation, we're gonna open up the hip, right? We're doing our exhalation. So the bretzel, I like to use, I would say the foam roller to kind of get a pillow here. Okay, so the top leg, I'm going to push it down with my hand. The back leg, I'm gonna grab, okay? And so the back leg, I'm kind of going into this hip extension, pulling it towards my butt cheek. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna drive like my knee down, and when I say go, I'm gonna try to push it up, right? So I'm gonna create tension, I'm gonna try to kick my foot back, and I'm gonna try to push my knee up, but I'm gonna resist it with my hands to create a ton of tension. So. Watch for a second, we're gonna go in three, two, one, and five, four, three, two, one, and exhale and rotate my thoracic spine. Right, and I get to this end range now, I'm gonna do this again. Five, four, three, two, one. And you can see how I'm getting more thoracic rotation. And I could do one more and get even more rotation, right? So I'm essentially opening up that front side, getting thoracic rotation, which are, those are the limitations that are gonna prevent you from having quality deadlift form. So I do that, right, for three to four reps, create tension for five seconds, exhale, get my rotation, get more extension. And now I go to my deadlift and get a nice, I'm using an 80 pound, because I like it to be decently heavy so I can create some tension here, okay? Obviously I can put it right in between my legs, pull the shoulder blades down, just get great form here, right? Just set up fantastic form, even though it might be very light for you. So I'm just dr drilling that pattern, perfect. I'm not, I'm not just doing it real quick and sloppy, I'm really ingraining that pattern, okay? So I do 10, 12, even 15, sometimes more, right? Like I said, going back to that kind of Matt Wenning building capacity. Second drill, I go to, one of the things that usually you wanna do is turn on core and get that hammy length if you got tight hamstrings, but they're probably protective leg, right? So straight leg raise with band resistance, so I'm gonna pull this down, abs on, core on. And from here, I'm gonna drive up, punch my heel to the ceiling, pull as much as I can, Control down, other side. Get that length. So I'm just gonna show you guys doing about three per side. Okay, being very deliberate about it. I probably end up doing eight to 10. And I'm go right back here, okay? Set up, once again, we're drilling quality reps as well, right? So we're building capacity here, opening things up, turning things on, and going right to that pattern that we're gonna, we're gonna work 
with our heavy deadlifts a little bit later. So in real time, I may be going a little bit heavier than I am right now. Okay, so I might go with, a, for instance, 88 or 9106 and kind of ramp up here. Number three, we're gonna go to downward dog and we're gonna mix it up a little bit. I'll show you guys how we're gonna do this, okay? So, going into a push-up position, I'm gonna push the ground away. So get my, essentially it's like a military press, right? I'm pushing myself away. And then once I'm here, I like to do a little bit of like, almost notice like stepping, driving that heel into the ground, opening up the, the calves, right? And getting some more range there. And I can keep pushing back up. Okay, once I open those up, and remember the closer I get here, obviously the harder ah, that becomes and come even closer. And then from there, I can go into a single leg downward dog position, right? Drive away, push back. I can even open up that lateral line a little bit. This feels great. Other side, push back. Open that up and bring it back, right? Same thing, I do that sequence probably five to six times. Guess what I'm doing next? Right back to that deadlift. Everything's feeling better, more activated, more mobilized, great form. Right, so I'm gonna speed this up, obviously, because I'd go for higher reps. And then, but this is the tempo I'd be going at. I'm starting to get sweat going right now, okay? From here, now this is just one that uh, has really worked for me because I just know that when this right glute kind of gets tight, when I'm deadlifting, I'll get some of that rotation. So what I do is hit like a kin stretch, and you can use a plyo box on this, um, I have pretty good mobility, so I'm gonna do it on this one. Pat on the bottom, like it could be a lower bench, lower box, and of course then you just wouldn't be as low as I am right now. And what I'll do here is kind of go a pails and rails, right? So I'm gonna push into the pad, and I'm gonna push into the pad and get, it, get, get this activation. So I'm driving with my knee down, with my ankle down for about five seconds, right? Staying nice and tall. And then from there, I'm going to pull myself with good posture and try to get that knee ankle to the chest, chest to knee. I'm pulling, pulling, pulling. Okay, now I'm gonna push again. And pull. Right, and I do that two to three different times, switch sides, and I do it on the other side. Same thing, and two, sometimes there's no rule, what I mean by there's no rule, see that feels way better right now. And I only do one side, but I might go twice, right, if I'm not feeling as good yet. Go right back to it. I'm just gonna hit about five or six for you guys. And it's feeling great, right? So another issue or another thing that usually we'll tend to see that, you know, short, tight adductors. So doing rock backs, Adductor rock back is going to that four point position. Foot out, and then we're gonna go back here. I actually like having a slider on the foot too, because then I can slide out and get that adductor length and then bring it back in. Rock back again. And I slide out with that slider, get more range of motion, push into the ground, get some activation, pull back in, okay? So this is all about six to 10 reps. But once again, I'm feeling those positions, creating tension in those positions. What I like to do right after I do this is do a Copenhagen plank, right? To now turn it on. So in this position, I'm gonna do the other side, obviously. But Copenhagen plank, I'm gonna go come up here, right? And I will push this into the pad, push this into the ground. I'm turning on obliques, turning on the adductor, abs are on, right? So once again, we're getting some of that activation going. Hold for 15 to 20 seconds. Going back to my deadlift, 
Same thing, we're just gonna. Oh, that feels fantastic. There we go. Sounds like a cooking show. <laughs> nice. So we're getting, first of all, we're working on specific things and then going into that specific pattern, right? From there, I'm gonna go into glute activation. Now here's the thing, you can kind of play with this. Like there is no golden rule necessarily. These are things that I like to use. I have a wider toolbox, but like I'll show you guys two drills here, right? Well, two drills, one would just be a glute bridge where the, this is basically a cook hip lift, right? Where I'm gonna bring this knee up, I'm gonna turn my abs on, and then it's gonna be pretty short range of motion. I'm gonna turn that glute on. I actually like to posteriorly tilt my pelvis here a little bit, right? So I really turn my glute on. Now, for some people, they might get too much hamstring here. So you may go regular glute bridge, two legs, and I've shown this to you guys before where I kind of roll up my spine slowly, and now I get way better glute activation, okay? So you could have somebody pushing you in, you push out, use a band, but the key is feeling the glutes, right? I could go into a frog pump here, okay? Elbows down, get a ton of glute activation here, and hit that for like 15 to 20 reps. The key being feeling glutes, right? So for, like I said, we'll change positions based on people's anatomy. So you kind of find that stance. If you're not feeling it, then you gotta go back to, or, or switch an exercise where you are feeling it. Okay, so maybe it's a elevated hip thrust position. You could go body weight here, okay? And just do body weight hip thrust. Go like, okay, I'm feeling it. All right, do I need to turn the toes out a little bit? Whoa, I feel it more here, great. Okay, better, okay, awesome. Right, so that's kind of like, the approach that I'm looking at versus just saying, hey, do this one exercise. It's more about making sure you turn the glutes on. Oh, obviously we know, we don't necessarily turn them on, but we get that pump going, and bam, I'm back in here. Nice, so here's the thing. We've been using the 80 the whole time. I'd probably ramp up 88, 95, 92, 106, 150, trap bar deadlifts, you know, 185, 225. If I was working up, this would be legitimately a warm up. Working up if I was doing something like three sets of three, you know, 455 for three, 485 for three, whatever I might work up to if I'm having a good day, 500 for three. But the point being is that would be my ramp up. And that hinge pattern has been drilled in, in between. I open up hip flexors, turned turn them on as well too like so like I said like I, I like doing hip flexor activation drills but you see there's about six exercises seven five right in that range and you're going back and forth which means you're gonna do at least six seven eight sets of additional capacity work drilling that hinge pattern before you continue to go up in weight right but this is fast and this is a combined warm-up so try this out like I said try this out don't be you know, afraid to throw in some stuff that you're like, oh man, I really like X, Y, Z drill and I'm gonna do that. Perfect, throw that in there, but do it in your dead, uh, next deadlift session and let me know how it feels. Give me some feedback. I love it, you see me next time. Coach Luca out, peace.